And based off of my first impressions, you guys, I... Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So the other day I did a little mini Sephora haul. Um, if you guys watched, I don't remember what video it was. It was a couple videos back. I brought up the new NARS Soft Matte complete foundation, that's what it's called, because so many of you guys have been loving it for fall, first of all. I think that was the video where I tried out products you guys were currently reaching for. So many of you guys have been loving that foundation, and for so long, like since this foundation launched, I've had several, several, several comments asking me to review it, and um, normally I get NARS PR, so I was kind of just waiting to see if they would send me it. I haven't seen a package, so I just went ahead and bought it myself because I really wanted to try it. And I bought a couple of the things at Sephora, so I thought it'd be fun to sit down, try the foundation, show you guys the other two items that I bought and try those out too, and just do like a little mini review on a few new things. Not anything too overwhelming, it's not a full face of new things, but I'm excited about them. So here's the foundation. Again, this is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. I've heard really good things about these. It's supposed to be for normal combination and oily skin types. You guys might know that I have been really, really obsessed with the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. This launched a while ago, but for some reason over the past couple of months, it's been one of my go-to concealers for under the eye. It just smooths everything out so beautifully. So I'm hoping that this kind of gives a similar effect. We'll find out. Um, I picked mine up in the shade Light 3.5 Salzburg, which is the same shade that I have in my NARS Sheer Glow Foundation. Here's what the packaging looks like. It has a nice soft touch packaging. It's really cute. I like this a lot actually. And then here's the dispenser on it. So it's not like a doe foot. I almost thought that it might be a doe foot applicator, but it's not. So I'm gonna give this a good shake. I'm gonna start with my complexion today. Um, I just have my skincare on. I'm not gonna do a primer just because I wanna really see how this foundation works and wears. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this and apply it on the back of my hand. So I got about this much on the back of my hand. I'm gonna take that on a foundation brush and let's just do one half of the face first to really see what this looks like. Okay, it seems like there's more coverage than the sheer glow. Well, maybe not. It's a different texture for sure, but a little bit is going a long way. So I'm just gonna keep spreading out what's already on the brush. I don't know where my handheld mirror went. So I'm gonna have to use a little compact to see what's happening. Okay, so initially when we apply it with a brush, it actually applies really nicely. If you guys know me, you know that I always like to use a sponge on top of foundation after a brush just because it gives the best finish in my opinion. So I'm gonna just go ahead and press that into the skin just to really make sure there's no brush lines, but there really wasn't obvious brush lines to begin with. Okay, well, we can obviously see which side of my face looks a lot better. This looks really nice. I feel like you can still see my skin through it in a way, which is nice, um, but it doesn't feel heavy on the skin. It gave really nice coverage still. Let's go ahead and apply it to this side of the face. I'm just getting a little bit more of that on the back of my hand, just so I have like the same amount on both sides of my face. I really do feel like already I'm noticing that this gives such a nice airbrushed effect, just like the concealer does. It's funny because I'm not usually one to reach for mattifying foundations or primers or concealers. For some reason on me, a lot of mattifying products tend to actually make me more oily. I know it kind of sounds weird and backwards, but that's just how things are with me sometimes when it comes to those types of products. But this is like so beautiful. It makes my skin look so airbrushed. I'm very impressed and it does not feel heavy or too drying on the skin. Like I can move my face around and it almost feels like I don't even have foundation on, which is really rare for a more matte foundation, in my opinion. Usually you can really feel those products on the skin. Wow, I'm really, really liking that. The shade works great. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I'm gonna be using the shade Vanilla. Oh my gosh, like my skin looks so nice and airbrushed. I'm sure I'm gonna say that word a bunch of times because it's the best word to describe how my foundation looks. I'm really happy that I picked this up and I can already see why so many of you guys are enjoying this. Okay, so I'm just taking that concealer and kind of buffing it underneath the eyes a little bit. And then as always, I like to take my sponge and just blend the rest out with that after I've kind of laid down the general area that I want the concealer. I'm gonna take what's left on my sponge and just go across the eyelid just to make sure there's no veins or discoloration showing through there. So I put a little bit of concealer on the blemishes on my cheeks, but then I thought, why not try out just layering a little more of that foundation over top to see how that looks. So I just grabbed a little more of the Soft Matte Complete Foundation. 
And I'm just seeing how that applies over top of blemishes if I were to try to build up coverage in certain areas. It seems to be working really nicely. I'm actually gonna wipe off the foundation that got on the lips. Usually I do this a little later, but I really need some lip balm. So I'm gonna put on the Huda Beauty Silk Balm. I think there's only one shade in this. It's just the shade Blush. I'm just gonna apply that to the lips. Okay, let's think about powder. I don't really know if I really need to powder this too heavily. Obviously, I always powder at least the T-zone. I'm gonna use just a little bit of my Laura Mercier translucent powder. I don't want too much of this, but I also didn't wanna use um, a powder that was gonna have a more luminous finish just so I could really see how this matte finish wears. I'm just gonna make sure to press out any of the extra concealer under the eyes. And then I'm going to use that powder to set. Same thing on this eye. I think I'm just gonna take the rest of that powder and set the T-zone. I also like to take powder through the brows if I haven't done them already. I find that that helps the brow pencil stick a little better. And then I'm just taking what's left of the powder and I'm kind of just pressing a little bit on the perimeters of the face just so that when I add like blush and bronzer, it doesn't skip. I think that looks really nice. You guys know that recently I've been into Going back in with my sponge after powder, it just like presses the powder into the skin more. It picks up any excess and makes things look so much more natural while still allowing you to set your face and make it last a really long time. I think my complexion looks so nice. It's definitely not a super natural looking foundation, although I feel like it does look really nice on the skin, but I think it would be a foundation that I would reach for on more of a special occasion. Well, I shouldn't say that because there's just certain situations where you might want a more flawless complexion, even if you keep the rest of your makeup more natural, which is actually what I'm planning on doing today anyway. Point is, I'm really liking how this is looking. I'm gonna fill my brows with my precisely my brow pencil from Benefit. Okay, so now that brows are on, I'm just gonna quickly bronze up the skin. I wanted to use my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I'm just going to lightly dust this on the cheeks and along the forehead just for a little bit of warmth. Once that's pretty much where I want it, I'm just taking my powder brush and going around the edges to make sure it's super blended. I didn't add any more powder to the brush, I'm just using what's left. Okay, so my next product that I bought was actually from a Kathleen Lights Favorites video. She had been talking about this blush for a while and I finally picked it up. It's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Luminous Flush. I love Hourglass blushes. I've been super into, I think it's called Sublime Flush. That was one that I recently put in my favorites video. Hold on, I'm just gonna set the eyelids a little bit before we go on to blush. But yeah, she was talking about how much she loved the shade Luminous Flush, and I finally picked it up. So here's what it looks like in the pan. I'm gonna go ahead and take this on a big fluffy brush, then I'm gonna smile and apply that to the apples of the cheeks. Wow, that's definitely such a nice blush. It's very um pigmented, or maybe I went in with a little bit of a heavy hand because I just love blush so much, so I'm gonna take my powder brush and just try to smooth that out a little bit. So I would say that this still has a nice glow to it like all Hourglass Ambient Lighting blushes do, but it's not as glowy as the Sublime Flush that I've been loving. Is that right here? Yeah, this one right here. This one's a little more glowy in my opinion. This will be nice to see the difference. So here's Sublime Flush that I've been really loving. It's more of a peach with a lavender undertone, where this one is almost more fuchsia with that little bit of, um, gold mixed in, so that's the difference. But this looks really nice on the face. It's not too reflective, although I do love how reflective the Sublime Flush blush is because on days where I don't wanna wear highlighter or I don't have time to wear highlighter, I'll just throw that on and it's kind of like a two-in-one situation. But this one does look really nice. I'm just adding a little more bronzer now. Okay, so the other thing that I picked up, I'm so excited about, so Dior actually, launched a few more shades in their Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. I have loved this for so long. The original one is what I'm talking about. So this is the original. I love this so much. I definitely get the most use out of these three shades, I would say, but they're great for mixing. I've also been able to use the bronze one on my eyelids and it's been great. But like I said, they released new shades, which is so nice. They're more catered toward specific skin tones, where this one I felt like was more universal. You could mix and match and make it work for your skin tone. Um, but they launched one called Rose Gold, and I had to pick it up and try it. So this one, obviously, compared to the original that I have, has more shades that I feel like will work for my skin tone. They also have a golden one, which is beautiful, and I think they came out with a third 
new one as well. I could be wrong, but I'm so excited to try this out. It looks beautiful. I actually wanna try out this shade right here. So I'm just gonna take that on a Nabla Cosmetics highlight brush and I'm gonna start to just work that onto the cheeks. I like that this has a little bit of a pink undertone to it. So I'm just gonna kind of buff that on the high points of the face. Already, I feel like it looks so nice. I do also wanna mix in this shade right here. It's a little bit more of a golden one. That's what's nice about these palettes. Honestly, I really, really like being able to mix whatever shades you want to kind of customize the undertone. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix the two for this side of the face and just kind of start buffing that over the entire cheekbone area above the brow. I also like to put a little on the front of the cheeks. I'm also gonna take that and apply it down the center of the nose and a little on the cupid's bow. I'm gonna go back in with my sponge and just press over top of the highlight. Again, just to kind of give it more of a skin-like effect, but I think that looks so nice. This formula really is one of the best that I've tried, so I'm really happy with how that looks on the complexion. I'm excited to see how it wears and how it compares to the first palette that I originally bought and owned. Okay, so let's quickly just finish up the rest of the makeup and then we'll do a little bit of a wear test. I'm gonna try to wear as long as I can today. It's kind of a unique situation because I do actually have to create more content later tonight. So I can't wear this as long as I would like to, but I'm gonna do as long of a wear test as possible because I'm so excited about it. Like I feel like my complexion looks really flawless and airbrushed. I'm gonna go pick out a couple more things to finish my look and then I'll be right back and we'll just do a quick eye look and throw on a lip and then we will see how this wears. Okay, so I wanted to use this eyeshadow palette on camera. I've been really loving it off camera. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize palette. Here is what it looks like. This is her holiday palette and it's so beautiful. I love the Charlotte Tilbury holiday palettes. They're some of my favorites, honestly. Let's do something kind of pinky peach. I'm gonna start off with this matte shade right here. It's like a orangey brown and I'm just gonna start buffing this in the crease and a little bit above as my transition shade. I'm also taking that shade and I'm running it along the lower lash line a bit. You know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take um, that Luminous Flush blush from Hourglass and I'm actually gonna take that eyeshadow brush and dip into this and kind of put that in the crease as well. I want this to be a little more pinky toned and that palette that I'm using doesn't have a pink matte. So I'm just gonna mix this in to kind of make it a little more pink than what I initially had. All right, next I'm gonna dip into this shade right here. It's a really beautiful kind of purple color actually. Do I want purple? Well, we're gonna go for it. I'm just gonna apply this all over the lid after I've applied that all over the lid, I'm taking the brush we were using and just kind of buffing the edges out. Well, this eye look is getting a little more smoky and intense than what I initially planned, but that's okay. We're gonna keep going. I'm gonna take that same Dream Glow shade on a smaller brush, and I'm just gonna run that across the entire lower lash line, right up against the lashes. And then to kind of lighten things up a little bit, I'm gonna take the lightest shade on the Dream Glow section. I'm just gonna take my finger and I'm gonna start applying this on top all over the eyelid, focusing on that inner third, just to bring back a little bit more of that pink tone. Same thing on this eye. And then I'm actually gonna take that Dior highlighter palette and I'm gonna dip into the pink shade. I just wanna try this out. I'm gonna take that on a small brush and I'm gonna run that across the inner third of that lower lash line, just for a little hint of pink on the lower lash line as well. And then I'm gonna mix these two shades and I'm going to apply that in the inner corner of the eye. Okay, I really like how the eye look turned out. I'm just going to apply my Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara to the top and bottom lashes. Okay, I got a mascara mark right here. I'm gonna wait for that to dry to wipe it off completely. Let's move on to lips. I'm gonna try this lip liner. This is from M Cosmetics. It's the Soft Blur Velvet Lip Liner in the shade Bunny. I'm just gonna dab off the lip balm so that the lip liner adheres a little bit. This is definitely a little bit of a more vibrant pink lip liner, but I'm gonna layer another lipstick on top so I think it'll work great. I'm just using my finger to kind of blend that out. Okay, now that that's blended out, I'm gonna take the MAC Velvet Teddy Lipstick. This is one that you guys actually made me buy. I know it's such a classic lipstick, but I had never tried it up until I filmed that um, fall lipstick video. I'll have it linked down below where I tried out your favorite fall lipsticks. I think that looks really nice with that lip liner. Okay, I'm just dusting off the mascara marks. 
And then let's step back and assess the situation. I might add a little more bronzer just to this side of the forehead, maybe on the cheeks a little, okay? And then I almost do want a little more blush. So I'm gonna take that hourglass blush. I'm just going to apply a little bit more of that right here on the apples. Um, normally I would do setting spray, but I really wanna see how this foundation looks and wears on its own. So I'm just gonna go straight into brow gel. This one is my Benefit 24 hour brow gel. Okay, so here is the finished look. I really, really love how the complexion looks. The highlighter is so beautiful. I feel like it's just the right balance between natural and also really glam, if that makes sense. Like it shows up on the skin just the way I want to, but it's not too intense. It just looks like it's coming from the skin. And then the blush is gorgeous. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of a wear test. So it's currently 418, which I know is a little later in the day than what I would have hoped for a wear test at least, especially with what I have to accomplish today. <laughs> but I really wanted to film this video today because I wanted to try out that foundation finally. And based off my very first impressions, I'm very excited about it. So I'm gonna wear this again for just a few more hours and I will come back and let you know what I think. I would love to know in the comments what you guys think about this foundation if you've tried it or if you haven't tried it. I wanna know what you think about how it looks on me. So yeah, let's do our wear test. I will see you guys in a few hours and we'll see how everything holds up. All right, you guys, so I am back in the studio. It is currently 10.04 p.m. So I've worn this for almost six hours, which I know is not like a super long wear test, but it's the best I could do today. And based off of my first impressions, you guys, I loved how this looked so far today. Obviously, I feel like I need to wear it for longer than six hours, but in the six hours that I have worn it, it's looked amazing. And I feel like usually with matte foundations, like I said, I tend to get pretty oily. I am noticing that I'm getting just a little bit kind of dewy on the forehead area, but it's not anything super dramatic. It's not anything that a little bit of a powder touch up couldn't fix if it was really bothering me, which it's not. Also, it hardly settled into my smile lines, which is really impressive. I felt airbrushed all day long. Like it's definitely a foundation that is um, a little more on the glam side in my opinion. I kind of want to try and see what it would look like if I tried to sheer it out. I want to see if like the longevity is the same or not. But I felt like I used um, not too much, but a pretty decent amount to get the coverage that I wanted. And considering how much I used, even though again, I don't feel like it was too much, but usually with a more mattifying, more full coverage foundation, it's almost a little more obvious when it starts to slip and slide on the skin because there's there's just more of it, if that makes sense, where a tinted moisturizer, for example, you're not gonna really notice when it starts to come off your face because the sheer coverage already kind of shows your skin a little more. The point is, I have thoroughly enjoyed this and it stayed on my nose, which usually foundations separate there. It didn't even get too weird around my nose. It's starting to a tiny bit. That's pretty typical with foundations. I felt like my pores looked smoother too and I didn't even use a primer. So if you can't tell, I personally am really impressed by this foundation, um, especially with without using a setting spray or a primer. I think it wore so beautifully and I almost feel like I would probably continue to wear it without a primer and just do my skincare, let that sink in for a while and just go in with this and just let it do its thing. I mean, can you tell on camera? It looks so nice. Sometimes when I do foundation reviews, not before I film or anything, but during or like toward the end of the day when I have already developed my opinion, I kind of like to go on Sephora and actually look at the reviews and see if people like it or not. And it's funny because I almost feel like people love this where they hate it. So it's something that is very different, like all foundations. I feel like foundation and mascara specifically are so specific to each individual and like your eye shape for mascara and then obviously your skin type, your texture, the place that you live, the products you use underneath or on top, like that all contributes. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting to see that people either absolutely despise this foundation or they were obsessed with it. I'm definitely leaning toward the obsessed side. It worked really well for me, so I'm happy about that. Um, really quickly, I just wanted to re-mention the Hourglass blush that I bought. Again, this is in the shade Luminous Flush. It stayed so 
beautifully on my cheeks today. I'm really excited to continue to wear this. I mean, I kind of knew I was gonna like it because I already know how I feel about Hourglass blushes. I'm interested to see which one of these two I end up reaching for more. I honestly feel like I'm gonna really enjoy both of them. Um, this is again, Sublime Flush, which is what I have been using a ton until of course buying this and trying it today. But I'm so happy that I picked this up. I'm also so happy that I picked up this Dior highlighter palette. It really didn't disappoint and I felt like throughout the day it just continued to melt into my skin and look more natural, just like the other formula that I'm familiar with. So I was really happy about that and I'm excited to continue to dip into all four of these shades. I do feel like I'm gonna get more use out of this one as far as all four shades go versus the other one, so I'm very excited about that. And yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you guys have tried the NARS Soft Matte Foundation. I would love to hear your opinion and also let me know if there are certain products you love to pair it with or maybe if it didn't work for you. I wanna know maybe what skin type you have so we can start a little conversation in the comments down below. I think, again, foundation is so personal, but I'm so excited about this foundation, you guys. Again, it's definitely um, something I'm gonna reach for when I just want flawless airbrushed skin. That's what it's gonna give you. Um, it's not gonna be my go-to for like the sheer no makeup makeup vibe, but there's always a time and place for an airbrushed complexion and that's totally what that did for me. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you're new here, hi, my name is Allie and I would love for you to join the family. You can do so by hitting the subscribe button and if you're already a subscriber but you wanna be notified on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, click on the bell after you subscribe and you'll get a notification every single time I post. By the way, I feel like people might ask, the lip color kind of wore off after I ate dinner today, but I loved the lip combo. So right before filming, I just threw on another layer of my Huda Beauty Silk Balm and so that's what's on my lips. It's just my leftover lipstick and a balm on top, in case you're wondering. Yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing day wherever you are. Thanks again for coming to my channel and for watching my videos and I will see you in my next video. Love you, bye.